It's 2 p.m. You've nailed three meetings, replied to 27 emails, and you feel unstoppable. Then suddenly, your brain shuts down. Tunnel vision, racing heart. You've completely flatlined. Your boss says, why didn't you pace yourself? Your friends say, you must have felt tired, but you didn't. Welcome to interoceptive blindness, the hidden glitch behind ADHD and burnout and autism spectrum disorder. In this video, we'll explore why some brains don't notice the low battery light until it's already too late and what you can do to recalibrate it. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant psychiatrist and educator. When someone says, I don't realize I'm tired until I crash, they often get labeled lazy, dramatic or unmotivated. But the neuroscience paints a different picture. They're driving a car with a broken fuel gauge. You see, interoception is the brain's internal dashboard. It reads heart rate, hunger, temperature, carbon dioxide levels, and integrates it into signals like I'm thirsty or I need to lie down. In ADHD and ASD, this system misfires. Sometimes underactive, no signal until the system crashes. Sometimes overactive, false alarms that heighten anxiety. In both cases, self-regulation becomes blindfolded speed chess, fast, reactive, and high stakes. This is what it looks like clinically. Meet Alex, 28, with ADHD. Crushes deadlines on adrenaline, then crashes, unable to even form a sentence. Maya, 24, with ASD, brilliant at coding. She skips meals, ignores thirst, and then collapses into tears after a 12-hour hyperfocus stretch. Different diagnoses, same hidden mechanism, interoceptive deficit. They didn't ignore fatigue. The signal never got through. You wouldn't blame someone for missing a red light if their dashboard bulb was burnt out. The brain's the same. So how does this dashboard normally work? You see, every task you do from brushing your teeth to writing a report follows the same basic loop. The brain goes through four key steps. First, it predicts the reward. Is it worth it? Two, it assigns a value. How meaningful is this? Third, it estimates the cost. How much effort will it take? And fourth, it decides to act or not. When your interoceptive system is intact, it feeds the loop with real-time bodily data. Hunger, pain, exhaustion, they're all cost signals. But in ADHD and autism, this loop is broken. The fuel light stays off, value misfires, cost is misjudged, and action becomes reactive, not regulated. This is why the brain racks up what's known as performance debt. I've covered it in the video here. Let's now unpack the neurobiology behind this. First, what is the interoceptive hub? This consists of the insula and the anterior cingulate cortex. The insula collects body signals, heart rate, gut activity, oxygen levels. The ACC or anterior cingulate cortex decides what to do with that information. Should I slow down? Should I push? In ADHD, studies show underactivity in these regions during body awareness tasks. In autism, the insula can either be underactive or hyperactive, overwhelming the brain or saying nothing at all. Two, dopamine and noradrenaline the brain's tuning dials. Dopamine helps you notice what matters by predicting reward and error. Noradrenaline sets the arousal levels, helping the brain wake up to incoming information. In ADHD, basic dopamine is often weak, meaning the brain doesn't notice or learn from small internal changes. So the dashboard signal feels fuzzy or delayed. Third, predictive coding and free energy. If you love Carl Friston's free energy principle, which I've covered here, you'll know that your brain is a prediction machine. Interoception compares predicted bodily state versus the actual state. If there's a big mismatch, high free energy, which is discomfort. Your brain doesn't just receive signals, it predicts them. When prediction doesn't match reality, it creates free energy, and that's what we call the surprise signal or the discomfort signal. In ADHD and ASD, the brain's predictions are noisy or mismatched. Sometimes it overreacts. Sometimes it doesn't notice at all. Fourth, the vagal break and the autonomic storms. The vagus nerve slows your heart when you exhale. It's the body's chill switch. Many individuals with ASD have low vagal tone, meaning the chill switch is rusty. And that's also because their amygdala is operating on overdrive. 
You see, without that break, arousal builds until the brain slams into fight, flight, or freeze. This also explains why sensory stimulation is so heightened in ASD. So what does this mean in real life? First, burnout, micro fatigue goes unregistered. People push and push until they collapse. This is why there are high rates of ME-CFS and long COVID in individuals with ADHD and ASD. As part of burnout, cortisol rhythms flatten. The body loses its ability to bounce back. Two, alexithymia. Without clear body signals, emotions blur. It becomes hard to tell the difference between tired, sad, angry, or hungry. Individuals find it difficult to name their emotions. Third, meltdowns and shutdowns. Here, there's a long silence followed by a sudden overload. Or the brain perceives emergency and shuts down higher thinking. Some explode, others freeze. So what do we do about it? Here's how we start fixing the gauge. There are four levels. Level one, sense, bottom-up awareness. Here we can use breath body scans. Scan your body from feet to head. Notice the tension. Carbon dioxide drills. Breathe through a straw for 30 seconds. Notice what changes. Other breathing techniques such as box breathing can be used or physiological size. Variables, HRV monitors give external feedback. Sensory tools, weighted blankets, pressure mats, or even firm hugs raise awareness through proprioception, touch. Level two, label. Build the emotional vocabulary. Use emotion wheel or flashcards. Log three body sensations and name the emotion. Repeat this daily. There are apps that can guide emotional recognition over time. Level three, regulate. This is about active control. Here, pharmacology plays a part. In ADHD stimulants such as methylphenidate, listex amphetamine, these raise phasic dopamine, sharpening prediction error signals. Patients often feel tired sooner, helping sleep and function throughout the day. But the key here is an optimal phasic and tonic dopamine balance. Two, alpha-2 agonists such as guanfacine and clonidine. These can dampen hyperarousal spikes or provide the prefrontal cortex with better control over the limbic area. SSRIs can be used in ASD anxiety because they reduce baseline anxiety and therefore prevent hyperreactive false alarms. But it's important to reach the right dose. Somatic tools, box breathing, paste exhale, valsalva hold to engage the vagal break within 30 seconds. Biofeedback or neurofeedback, HRV guided breathing, patients learn to nudge the parasympathetic switch. And finally, level four. This is about prevention a macro strategy. Options include pacing frameworks, the Pomodoro with mandatory interceptive check-ins, a phone buzz can ask hunger, thirst, posture, eyes, mood, rate it. Next, sleep architecture. Ensure that when the stimulant calm down occurs, one enters into blue light filters, shutting down the phone, or melatonin may also be useful for some individuals. Addressing inflammation, optimal diet and exercise. Here are omega-3 fatty acids, anti-inflammatory diets, looking after the gut-brain axis, all of this can provide a good foundation. Finally, community and coaching. Working with the people around you. This may include therapists, but also individuals at home. Think of it as sense, label, regulate and prevent. Miss one link and the chain snaps. So you can test your dashboard tonight with three simple tasks. Remember, as you use this, the goal isn't hypervigilance, it's balance. Too much interoception can be overwhelming. Too little leaves you burnt out. So these exercises help calibrate, not control your internal signals. First, pulse pause. Once an hour, pause and feel your heartbeat for 10 seconds. Is it faster or slower than expected? The point isn't precision, it's simply Tuning into a signal we often overlook. Two, thirst tally. Every time you take a sip of water, drop a coin or paper clip into a jar. At the end of the day, reflect. Did you respond to thirst or forget until prompted? Now you can use this with any other behaviors as well. This reveals gaps in signal recognition, not willpower. Third, exhale reset. Try this once before bed. Breathe in for four counts, out for eight, and do this five times. Notice whether your body relaxes during the long exhale. This isn't a score, it's feedback. A calm shift suggests your vagal system is online. So let's zoom out and summarize this. In ADHD and autism, the body whispers, 
but the brain doesn't hear it. It's already in shutdown mode. But interoception can be trained, the dashboard can be repaired, and meltdowns can become signals, not surprises. So if this video shifted your perspective, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Share this with someone that needs it. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, stay curious. Bye-bye.